afternoon, Cross Timbers. Today is Friday, April 10th, 2015. This is Texan TV News from Tarleton State University campus in Stephenville, Texas, and I am Casey Bergen. Today's top story in campus news, tomorrow marks the first of eight new student Texan orientations. To tell us more about it, let's turn to Macy Ray. All right, I am with Mackenzie Merriman today from Tarleton's orientation staff. How are you doing today, Mackenzie? Doing pretty good, how about yourself? I'm doing good. All right, how does Tarleton's orientation staff um, fully prepare for orientation? Um, our orientation staff, we've been in a class since uh, January. We've been practicing um, how to be a leader, how to be a mentor for the incoming class of 2019. And tonight we have our first training um, to prepare for tomorrow's big day, our first orientations. All right. What is the main goal um, behind orientation? The main purpose of orientation is basically it's just the last go around before your official title time student. Um, you get to do one last walkthrough through the campus. You get to meet all your department heads. You get to register your first uh, semester classes and you fall in love with the Tarleton campus. All right. Do you feel as if Tarleton's um, orientation is just another tradition here, or um, how do you feel about that? I don't necessarily think it's a tradition. Um, I think of it, because I mean, every university has orientations, but Tarleton's is definitely more upbeat and positive and exciting than other universities. So I feel like in a sense, it's different, but not necessarily a tradition. Okay. Could you give us a brief rundown of tomorrow's events? It'll be an early morning. Um, we'll start out being pumped up, excited, get all the kids excited. Um, and then we'll listen to a few speakers talk about different things on campus and different uh, sources that we have on campus. And then we'll walk through, meet all the department heads. We'll register the classes and get their testing cards and we'll be official to the students. Exciting. All right, it sounds like it's going to be a busy day. Um, thank you, Mackenzie, for joining us. Okay. And back to you, Casey. All right, thanks for that, Macy. In local news, the Flash Day reports that Erath County's Sheriff's De deputies arrested a registered sex offender based on warrants out of Hearn when he reported to his probation officer on Thursday morning. Sheriff Tommy Bryant said that Jeffrey Don Kennedy, 37, was arrested on three warrants from an investigation by the Hearn Police Department. Kennedy has lived in both Dublin and Stephenville, but lived in Hearn for nearly four months late last year, according to the Texas State Sex Offenders Registry's records. Kennedy is on probation for possessing child pornography and was serving a seven-year probation period requiring him to register with the state every time he changed his address. Kennedy was taken into custody and booked into the Erath County Jail with three charges of sexual misconduct, where he will remain until Hearn officials come and retrieve him. And now today's state, national, and international news from the Associated Press. In state news, a proposal to change the state's definition of an adult in the criminal justice system is on its way to the, to the Texas House of Representatives. The bill that would classify 17-year-olds as juveniles could be hindered by Democratic Senator John Whitmire, who oversees criminal justice issues in the Texas Senate. Although he has said he's opposed to raising the age, many others support raising it to 18. On Wednesday, a House committee approved a Democratic Representative Harold Dutton's bill to the Texas House. If it clears that chamber, it will go to Whitmire's committee and then possibly on to the full Senate. Research indicates that adolescents are less likely to reoffend if they are funneled into the therapy rich juvenile system. Dutton said Whitmire has told him that he would listen if the bill ended up passing the House committee. In national news, a hearing lasted more than five hours in Jackson, Mississippi on Thursday. A federal judge sentenced two women to prison for the roles they played in the, de in the 2011 death of James Craig Anderson. U.S. District Judge Henry T. Wingate, who oversaw the case, made sure to show relatives and supporters of the two women that their presence in the truck that ran over Anderson in a Jackson parking lot was not an accident, but a result of a pattern of racist behavior. Wingate sentenced 21-year-old Shelby Brooke Records to eight, Richards to eight years in prison after her guilty plea on one count of conspiracy to commit a hate crime and one count of concealing the crime by lying to Jackson police. He said it's 22-year-old Sarah Adelaide Graves to five years in prison after her guilty plea to one count of conspiracy to commit a hate crime. Those are the maximum sentences available under both women's plea agreements. However, Wingate said he wished he could send the women away for longer prison terms. Both women were riding in a truck that ran over James Craig Anderson back in June 2011. Anderson died after being beaten and
and run over. Both defendants apologized to Anderson's family on Thursday. And now for today's international news, we turn to the Associated Press. This is AP News. Civil rights leaders are calling for the creation of a citizens review board in North Charleston, <laughs> South Carolina. NAACP leaders say they want the board to look into complaints of police brutality. The demands come after video surfaced of a white police officer shooting an unarmed black man. An Associated Press investigation found nearly 300 people have breached security outside major U.S. airports in the past 10 years. San Francisco International Airport responded to news of the report. A spokesperson saying perimeter security is very important. Hackers claiming allegiance to Islamic State militants sabotaged a French TV network. They took over the French news network's websites and social media accounts. Godzilla has surfaced in Tokyo. The mythical monster was appointed special resident and tourism ambassador to a Tokyo neighborhood. A towering statue of the beast's head was unveiled on Thursday. Padmanandarama, the Associated Press, with AP News Minute. In sports, on Sunday, Carleton Student Government Association will be hosting the first ever Zach Schaefer Memorial Powder Cup football tournament. In order to play, students must have a team of 7 to 10 women, and teams must pay a $50 registration fee. In addition, teams of 3 to 5 male cheerleaders can participate at a cost of $5 per person. Today is the deadline to register. General admission to the event is $1. Zach Schaefer was a Tarleton student who passed away after receiving a head injury during a football practice back in 2009. In previous years, SGA has hosted an annual dodgeball tournament to raise money for the Zach Schaefer Endowment Scholarship. All proceeds will go to the Zach Schaefer Scholarship this year. Today's weather is brought to you by weather.com. Today we can expect partly cloudy skies with a high of 72 and a low of 54. Tomorrow we have a 50% chance of rain late in the day along with a high of 74 and a low of 60. On Sunday, that chance of rain goes up to 60% and we can expect a high of 82 and a low of 63. Today's broadcast was produced by Macy Raymer, Dalton Wolverton, and Daniel Houston. You can watch Texan TV News live Monday through Friday at 12.30 p.m. on Northland Cable Channel 9. Don't forget to tell your friends about us and become a fan of Texan TV News on Facebook. I'm Casey Bergen. Tune in on Monday for the latest news from Charleston State University campus in Stephenville, Texas.